You having trouble getting in? This is fucked up. <laughs> I have to psych myself up to get in here. One leg at a time. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that is an age. That is self-inflicted damage. Oh, my God. Oh, fucking hell. Can you rub some glutamine? into my thighs please. oh yeah so i feel like it's needed <laughs> i'm really looking forward for to tomorrow's bike ride oh, what's going on here oh. oh why is it doing that like the alarm wasn't on or anything oh, oh thank god <laughs> there's no way i could have pushed it <laughs> i'm chris gethin I'm going to be training to prepare for an Ironman. Most people give themselves two years. I'm giving myself six months, and we're going to do it. Legs are absolutely destroyed now, so what's the best thing to do? Running. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the hybrid edition of the Bodybuilding.com podcast. And we're caged in here with a wild animal, the master of pain himself, Chris Gethin. So how much of your coaching is your coaching or that you're creating? Obviously, I would think that y your hypertrophy workouts or your bodybuilding workouts are based on what you yeah. know and your experience. I'd done a lot of research beforehand because I thought, well, I am going into the unknown here. And I'd spoken to a few people like uh, Dave Scott, you know, six times mm -hmm. Ironman right. world champion, had some great conversations with him. Um, but then I realized, you know, after reading a lot of the magazines and going on websites and listening to these people, I thought, well, I can't really do what those guys are kind of telling me. It just wouldn't make sense for my body. My body couldn't do that. It wouldn't do that. And the amount of food that I have to carry with me when I'm on a bike, for instance, is unbelievable. In a podcast. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I get light lightheaded now. Mm -hmm. So if I go out on a bike ride for about an hour, I have a massive feed and think, that'll do me. Mm -hmm. But 45 minutes later, I'm getting hungry. And I think, nah, that can't be right. S you know, 15 minutes after that, I'm getting lightheaded. Uh, there's various there's various things that I know that I have to do very much differently. I have to strengthen my core a lot. Running in that position for somebody with a you know a heavier upper body is just not used to this. Your core collapses, your diaphragm right. collapses, then you're not uh, you're not going to finish or you're going to struggle. There's a lot of things that I have to think about now in order to allow bodybuilding to complement this process instead of take away from it. Right, kids, that is the end of day 36, in the gym, that is. Now I'm gonna take my uh, post-workout shake and get straight into the pool. Uh, so my shoulders and delts are adequately fried and fucked right now, so perfect time to go in the pool to see if I can uh, keep myself from sinking. So it's gonna be a struggle, but that's what we want because when we do eventually get into the pool fresh, then it should be a lot easier. So I wanna make these swims as difficult as possible by completely fatigue in the triceps, completely fatigue in the delts because those are two predominant muscle groups that we're gonna use within these drills right now. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Are we are filming now? Yeah. Right. You're on. All right. So we're having another massage with Kat here. Again on the legs, this time focusing more on the flexors because I noticed yesterday when I was running, my flexors are tight on both sides. So it's obviously a weakness there and a tightness as well. So obviously there's two types of um, recovery. That's gonna be passive recovery 
and active recovery. Active recovery would be like you know your low intense days when you, you know, if you see it written on the program, taking your bike for a walk, as it's called. So that's your active recovery, taking it easy. And you may find that if you're somebody who's not used to doing this, like a normal athlete would probably go out and that would be a recovery, an active recovery ride. But for me, it's different. It's not, it's still hard work. So take better care of not just focusing on your active recovery, but your passive recovery, whether that be massage and your foam rolling and your ice baths and various means as well as nutrition to focus on that. It is day 37. Today we've got legs. What was good about yesterday's workouts? Sunshine's attitude has changed in a good way. She has been struggling. We had a good talk about this on Saturday, but there was a complete attitude change and I could definitely feel it. So it just goes to show, you know, your change of attitude will deliver a change of outcome. Legs are absolutely destroyed now. So what's the best thing to do when you've got destroyed legs? Do some drills, running. So just gonna take it easy for the first mile, nice and steady, get our legs, high cadence of about 180 to 190. And then I'll see how my groin goes. If my groin's okay, then yeah, I'll go hard on these uh, 400 meters. If not, I'm gonna have to drive Miss Daisy on the way back. Oh. All right, we went a little bit over the four mile mark, 5.1, but in a program you can extend the warm up if you want, or the cool down. We went a little bit further. Um, man, I'm a little bit pissed off, my uh, groin. Like that mile, first two and a half miles or so felt awesome. I was so happy. I thought I have no problems with my groin whatsoever. Everything felt really good except my legs just really heavy after the leg workout and obviously during the leg workout I didn't have any aggravation then around mile three further It's just started tightening up and getting inflamed now This is the challenge. This is uh, what we do, you know, if it was easy everybody would do it and uh, We just got to be smart and navigate our way around these injuries. I'd be living in denial if I didn't think that I'd never have injuries. I've had so many of the bloody things. Uh, you know, just over the years, you know, like for the past 20 years, you know, whether it be from, you know, motocross, surfing, snowboarding, downhill mountain biking and in the gym, I've had injuries for the past 20 years and a lot of them I've kind of forgotten about. They've sealed and uh, put them away in the drawer and forgotten about them, but now, during all this activity, and I, I've only got fucking started. They're starting to make themselves known. A few of them are coming up and they're, uh, they're making themselves aware that they have been there in the past. So I just have to respect that, acknowledge that, and uh, just navigate my way around it. But we're all, we're all good. We're, uh, we're human, so we're indestructible, aren't we? Today we're starting with back, which is probably one of the only muscle groups that isn't sore on me at the moment, other than chest. This week has been very, very intense in regards to the weights workout. I definitely feel a little bit more comfortable with the volume and the intensity of the other workouts because uh, I'm starting to feel like I'm adapting now, so I'm able to take it up a notch in these weights workouts. And I'm feeling it, my triceps are killing me, my delts are sore and my legs are absolutely obliterated from yesterday. That's 
the end of uh, the workout, we just kept it very uh, short and intense, done in uh, under an hour. And uh, now we're going into the pool for a swim. This is going to be by far my largest swim yet, or both of us, 2,385 meters, I think it is. So we're going to rush on in there. Uh, we're going to just get this done with. And uh, then uh, later on tonight, what we're going to do is head on over to Tritown to meet up with Anton, who is a top mechanic for several teams. And he is going to show us how to change a tire should we get a puncture in as fast uh, as time as possible. So let's say we're out on race day and we get a flat. The first thing you need to do is you need to be prepared so that if you get a flat, you have the tools to fix, to fix the issue. The first thing I do, if I notice my rear tire goes flat, is I shift to the outside gear and the small ring in the front. So but take that quick release lever, pull it open, and then just straight back. One finger is gonna get greasy. Rest the bike down on the ground on the non-geared side. You don't wanna get dirt and grime uh, packed into your derailleur. So you're gonna rest the bike down on the left side. The first thing we need to do is identify what caused the tire to go flat. I've seen some people just in the excitement of having to get off and change it out, change the tube out. They put a new tube in, they do everything perfect except pull out the thorn, you know, and it just ends up going flat a couple miles later all over again, okay. which is exceptionally embarrassing. All right, so we have finished our session with Anton today, which was very, very beneficial. I'm really glad that we did that today. Um, because, you know, what if we're putting all of our time and effort into the training and our nutrition, but we're neglecting the mechanics of the bike and how to efficiently save time and not get frustrated and not get stressed because when we do that, we lose our judgment call and do everything wrong. Anyway, that's a good thing. Uh, now I'm gonna probably come back next week to have a bike fit, so is uh, Sunshine, so we know that the bike is fit correctly for our height, for our structure, uh, to make sure that uh, we have a comfortable ride and not just a successful one. Good morning. Day 29, on the way to the gym. We're, um, Got chest and abs today. Right, finished the workout. Uh, before, chest was the only muscle group that wasn't sore. Now that's fucking sore. So everything's sore. Um, and now we're going to get home and have a bloody good feed. Day 40 is coming to a close. Let me try and wrap up today. So uh, it's a non-training day today and um, my legs are still freaking sore. I've just been trying to get a little bit more glutamine in me, a little bit more protein than usual. I went into Starbucks uh, just to get a call in with uh, Mike Fekic. It was good to have a conversation with him and find out uh, what times that I need to get in my swim and my cycle and my run in order to finish it. So uh, the cycle seemed to be a little bit fast. I think it was like a 12 mile an hour average. I don't know if I'll be able to keep that, but who's, who knows? And then after I had a conversation with Mike, finished off at the paint and sip place this evening. So this is what Friday night is made up of with uh, Sunshine and I. We go out there, we hit it hard on a Friday night. I'd like to say that's my masterpiece, but Sunshine's making it look half decent. You did a so, good job. So what I'm doing is painting Peppa Pig here for my niece Alice because she absolutely loves Peppa Pig. And uh, so we're gonna paint that because I'll be in the UK now in about two weeks time. And uh, Sunshine is doing the butterfly because that's way too technical for me. I don't have a steady hand. I can do the big stuff <laughs> and grass. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> you painted the background. Yeah. Hey, I did. I did the pink. I just didn't do the outline. I did the clouds. Just didn't draw them. Wait till I finish this bad boy off with the eyes. I can do black <laughs> eyes. So now I'm going to have a feed. I'm going to have an Indian, but a clean Indian. I have chicken tikka without no, no oil, no sauce, no butter. I'll feed me up a little bit for tomorrow's uh, easy bike, but hard run. And then once I've done the hard run, I'm going to go straight to the hospital to meet with my doctor, Caleb, and um, Dr. Redin, and get a scan to see what the hell's going on with his groin. He said he wants me to show up in pain. So I'm going to finish my run immediately and uh, go see him limping, possibly. Anyway, so let's see what tomorrow brings. All right, so I've just finished my bike about uh, five minutes ago. Just had a quick recaged and banana. Now I'm going... Uh, to a trail which is about five minutes from here to run and I'm gonna hit those drills that we've got I found so far and my asthma is so bad luckily I've got my inhaler with me but it's not really helping my cause at the moment I can see, you know, there's no, I've got no uh, blood vessels or arteries or you know, anything right here. Um, and there's a little bit of, there's a little white area there that's a bit more disorganized than the rest and it is deep. All right, finished meeting with Dr. Redden and the next step is um, to have an MRI to have a look at the muscles deep, deep down with a clear picture to see if there's any tearing or any injury deep down there. It's that time again. Time for another ice bath for like 15 minutes. I'll just soak in there just to uh, help my legs recover. Again, get rid of the inflammation in my groin. I've got some of the Voltron on there uh, that I put on about an hour ago, but I'm in for a big ride tomorrow. So gotta keep recovering internally and externally. Lovely jubbly. I'm 20, 22 miles in at a place called Horseshoe Bend. I'm just having some Nutrition Solutions uh, pancakes here. I've got some dried fruit, but I think the pancakes should do the trick. So I'm gonna wolf this down and get going. I found our friend Chris Kevin. I've come out to give him some encouragement, bring him some fluids, and uh, how are you? You're 50 miles in? I've got it in my head to do 70, so I'm gonna have to go a little bit further. When I'm pedaling, yeah, my legs are really sore, but the thing is, I associate the pain with movement. You know, when you're doing an exercise, yeah, it's kind of supposed to hurt, and I've become accustomed to that. So when I stop and everything hurts and I feel the pain in my knees and my quads, that's what I don't like because everything kind of feels like it's turning into scar tissue now and it becomes really, really tight. So as tiring it is to continue going, the only reason I want to stop is to fuel. And I tell you what, mentally I feel so much better for doing it. I've been forcing it down me by getting in too many calories probably and too much fluid. Um, but I feel so much better doing that as opposed to having a little bit less. And I didn't really realize that until I just forced myself to eat a load of food and drink a lot of fluids. 